Business, my friend, is war. As a matter of fact, life itself is war. And on this thing called the battlefield, everyone, don't kid yourself, everyone gets to experience some kind of fear from time to time. While it is true that seasoned soldiers, seasoned officers on the battlefield have simply managed to come to a place where they learn to live with fear and to do things in spite of whatever they're experiencing as a signal of fear. The truth remains, everyone, including these brave soldiers, including these brave officers, get to experience some kind of fear on the battlefield. Having said that, it is absolutely important for everyone to learn to come to a place where precisely we learn to cohabitate with fear. We learn to live with fear. We learn to not become friends with fear, but we learn to look fear in the eye and simply say, despite what I'm feeling right now, despite what I'm experiencing right now, I'm still going to go out there and find a way to fight for what matters to me. Why is that important? Because failure to live with fear, failure to come to a place where you can cohabitate with fear, will cause you to become a liability, not only for yourself, but also to everyone who depends on you. The community, your family, and the unborn generations who are depending on you to do the right thing as far as whatever you are facing right now. So that's a given. That we all have to learn to cohabitate or to live with fear as far as whatever situation is concerned. So in this particular video, I would like to talk about uh, how you can learn to create a distance between yourself and these distressing thoughts and how you and break negative thinking habits. That's what this video is going to be about. I'm going to share with you a simple strategy that anyone can implement. But before I get to that, let me just start uh, this presentation with a story. In 2013, South Africa lost a giant. Africa lost a giant. As a matter of fact, the world lost a giant in the person of Nelson Mandela. As he passed away, the country decided to have a memorial service for this uh, great gentleman. And many leaders around the world decided also to travel to South Africa to pay the respect to Nelson Mandela. Amongst them, President Barack Obama. As they gathered during the ceremony, there was a gentleman, Jantia, I believe, that was standing beyond every speaker on the podium. But he was there to interpret using the sun lake. As every speaker came to the microphone to speak, the gentleman was simply there dutifully doing his job. For most English-speaking people, 
nothing seemed to be out of the ordinary. But then some people started asking themselves questions. Because some of the speakers that came to speak, that came to deliver a message, were not English-speaking people. Yet somehow, John C. managed to still stand there and interpret whatever they were saying. But when it came time for President Barack Obama to speak, that's when people started paying close attention and then started seeing things that didn't seem really quite uh, right as far as how to interpret his concern. And one thing led to another, and before you know it, that gentleman was simply exposed as a not being very fluent when it comes to uh, sign language. Uh, some people even went to the extent of saying that, yes, it was a fraud. I'm not going to go there. I'm simply going to say that, yes, that gentleman was simply seen as not very fluent when it comes to sign language. And in a subsequent interview that he did uh, for many news outlets such as CNN, he went on to say that, yes, he was, uh, yes, he was suffering from uh, uh, mental illnesses. And therefore, he could not really uh, focus on the job. As a matter of fact, he described himself as schizophrenic. And uh, he was seeing angels during this event. And this is why maybe he was not able to perform at his very best. But the rest is history. But why am I talking about this story? Because precisely, there is a comedian by the name of uh, Trevor Noah who did a brilliant uh, piece about uh, John C. as uh, a South African a citizen. And he was simply saying uh, that, uh, yes, he could not understand how Jean T managed to uh, pull this off, number one. Number two, uh, the one key thing that he kept asking himself is, how could he stand there and know that, yes, uh, what he's doing is basically going over the same gesture over and over again, even for different speeches that had nothing to do uh, with, what, with the same uh, sign language he was using for almost everyone. The one thing that caught my attention is, during the joke, he went on to say that, yes, so for those who depended on sign language, when they saw that Jan was basically going in a completely different direction, they didn't know what he was saying, at one point they started complaining, and they simply said, yes, I, can, I cannot listen to him anymore. And that's exactly what they did. I cannot, we cannot listen to him. They put their hands on their eyes because they had them speech is actually something that they have to see. Sign language is something that they have to see. If they see it, it makes sense to them. But they cannot hear what you're saying and actually uh, comprehend what you're trying to say. You have to use sign language in order for them to understand whatever you are trying to express as an idea. Which then brought me back to the concept of illusion. Way before we as a species came to a place where we could actually use our words to express ideas and convey ideas from one entity to another, we used to depend also on sign language. We used to simply uh, depend on the ability to read one another body language in order to interpret what we're trying to convey. So when it was dark, our ancestors could not communicate with one another because in the dark they could not see each other. Yet the amygdala, the part of the brain responsible for fight or flight, when it would kick in, our ancestors had no way of actually expressing to one another, my goodness, I think I'm experiencing something called fear. And I don't know what to do. Could you please tell me if you see the same thing? In the dark, they could not do that because the, the sign language could not be read in the darkness. It's only when they evolved, they came to a place where they stopped using the hands. They stopped gesturing to one another, to speak to one another. They came to start using the words that slowly but surely we came also to a place where we began to find strategies to speak to our fears and to learn to live with our fears. And this is something I wanted to put on the table 
right now. Why this particularly important? Because this strategy, uh, the four letter strategies, is absolutely linked to the ability to speak. Let me just give it to you. It's D I S C. D, which stands, it simply stands for what? From time to time, you're going to experience this thing called fear. And when this thing called fear actually kicks in, I would like for you to see, detect fear, but not to deflect. You have to become aware of the fact, yes, I'm experiencing something called fear or anxiety. You have to detect it, but not deflect. You have to detect it, but not give in to fear. And this is very important. This is strategy number one, awareness. Number two, uh, when fear comes, from time to time, it will try to make you feel this big. Then you have to simply now move to the second level, which is simply inferiority. You have to challenge that thought of feeling of inferiority. What makes you think that you are indeed this small? What makes you think that indeed you are inferior? You have to challenge that. That's number two. Number three, which is simply S. S for what? You have to come to a place where you are going to speak up. Say to yourself, yes, I think I'm experiencing fear right now, but I'm going to challenge myself to open my mouth and start speaking. I know it looks scary, but I'm simply going to open my mouth and start speaking boldly and let the whole world know that, yes, I may be afraid, but I'm still going to move confidently in the direction of that particular object. Why? Because it is the only thing standing between myself and my particular goal or vision. You speak to whatever obstacle that you are actually facing and that's how slowly but surely you're going to come to a place where you're going to have to master yourself and ultimately master the environment called battlefield. That's an S. And last but not least, C. C for what is uh, what is used to be called enlightened corpus or body. You have to understand one key thing. You speak through your body. As a matter of fact, communication is mostly, if just a, a few percent, maybe I believe 5 or 25 percent, it's a spoken language and the rest is in body language. So you have to come to a place where when you start speaking, you also have to pay attention to your body. Don't look down, look up. Don't slouch, square your shoulders and give yourself permission to believe that you matter. You believe that, yes, I'm not in for you. I'm going to speak up and I'm going to also own my body, the corpus, and I'm going to also speak through my body. That's number one. Number two, you also have to use your body to come to a place where you're going to level your language. You're going to say, yes, I'm not going to speak just for the sake of speaking, but I'm going to speak and be intentional. By leveling your language, I'm asking you to come to a place where you pay attention to what you are saying. Don't give in into generalization. Oh my goodness, if I fail at this, I'm a failure. No, pay attention to what you're saying. Give yourself to believe that yes, it's simply a test and no matter what happens on the battlefield, you are still more than enough. So level your language and get a strategy is simply D-I-S-C. D for what you have to see, give yourself permission to detect and not deflect. I for what you challenge the feeling of inferiority. S for what give yourself permission to speak up and C for what Master your body, master the corpus. Give yourself permission to pay attention to your body and make sure you square your shoulders and don't look down. As you speak, speak firmly. Look, uh, whatever situation, look it in the eye and give yourself permission to stay in the game. And last but not least, as you're speaking, also remain intentional. Level your language. Make sure that as you're speaking, you pay attention to what you are saying and don't let anything cause you to believe that this is the one key thing that's going to determine whether or not you are a man or woman of valor. Give yourself permission to believe that yes, no matter what the issue is going to be, you are still a person that carries a great amount of significance. And this is absolutely key. Now let me just end this particular thing. I'm just going to use that to explain to you why uh, being bold and learning how to manage your fears and learning how to live with your fear and learning how to cohabitate with your fear is absolutely important. Uh, because, as I was saying, the people around you are looking to you also for direction. Let me tell you why. In 1992, at the University of Parma, there was a gentleman by the name of uh, Giacomo Rizzolatti. He was 
paying attention to uh, an experiment they were actually conducting at the university with a, uh, a group of monkeys. They were just trying to pay attention to uh, the movement of the arms and how it was sending different messages to the brain. It was a funny thing. One day during the lunch, they forgot that the monitor was still attached to the brains of the monkey and the computer was still on. So they, re they retreated to an area, an area where they would simply now be able to enjoy the lunch. As they were eating, nothing was happening. But at one point, someone started eating bananas. And as they started eating bananas, all of a sudden they started detecting movement on the computer monitors. The computer started seeing, showing movement as if the monkeys themselves were now eating bananas. They were eating, and this was simply triggered by the fact that some of them were not eating bananas. And that way, they started paying attention to a like, particular situation. And this is the genesis of this thing that today known as mirror neurons. So basically, whatever you do, however you actually choose to behave in any particular situation, it's also causing people around you to have a corresponding uh, thoughts or feeling it's uh, within themselves. So if you go there uh, and you don't pay attention to the fear that you are actually experiencing and you let the body simply be overcome by that fear, what you don't realize is that that fear or anxiety is also going to cause something in the brains of the people around you. And if these people are not really self-aware themselves, it's simply going to cause the whole unit, the whole division or the whole family to be crippled by fear. To be paralyzed by fear and not take any action as far as whatever they're dealing with is concerned. So you as a leader, you have to pay attention to how you respond, how you choose to respond to anything, any feeling or thoughts of fear as far as whatever you're dealing with is concerned. Because whatever you're dealing with, how you choose to respond to it is going to now cause other people around you to either be emboldened by your action or to simply uh, express a case of uh, contamination that your negative thinking habit, number one, or any, any proximity to fear, to see also uh, trigger something in the, the brains of the people around you and cause them also to start feeling this small and start seeing themselves as unworthy of taking any action as far as the situation is concerned all right i'm gonna stop right here before i go just a quick reminder if you need any help when it comes to helping you flip the switch to become the unstoppable man or woman you were so designed to be my friend reach out to us and we're going to help onboard you and take you from wherever you are right now all the way to the top where you so belong all right much love everyone remember the best is yet to come but now for the best to be manifested you and i have to remain intentional and intentionality when it comes to how we manage fear start only with one key thing this simple formula d-i-s-c learn to detect and not to deflect number one learn to challenge the feeling of inferiority number two number three learn to speak up and as you speak up remember the last c the last letter which is the c for core Learn to use your body to speak up, number one. And as you're speaking up, remember to level the language. Whatever you're dealing with right now is not a deal breaker. Whatever you're dealing with right now does not determine the, the, the amount of uh, significance you are carrying and purpose as far as who you are is concerned. All right? Much love, everyone. I'm out. Take good care. Bye.